Hi, this is Ivan and welcome to the channel. Today I'd like to do a rundown of my flight simulator. This is version 6.0. Holy crap, I can't believe I've been through this many iterations of this thing, but it is an always uh, evolving process. But this is my current setup. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of run through some of the components and we'll kind of start with the computer and then kind of go from there. So the computer is a home build. It's all basically Asus gear for the most part. There's some Corsair stuff in there too. But this is a 13 Gen i9 with 64 gigabytes of RAM. And the graphics card itself is also an Asus 4070 Ti. So far this is meeting my needs. I don't run 4K. Uh, I typically run 1080p. Um, that's largely due to the fact that I stream but it has so far been meeting my needs um, and it'll probably be a little bit before I ever upgrade this thing. It is sitting on a Eureka computer table. I picked that up from Amazon. These things are really convenient and they just give you a lot of space, uh, give you the ability to put stuff in the same space that your computer would take up. And in fact, I have two of these and I use one as kind of a, as a console and an area for my headphones and some of my other streaming gear. It's just, they're just really cool pieces of gear to help you keep your area organized um, and keep everything just kind of neat. So this again is the overall view and what we'll kind of do is we'll just kind of work our way from left to right. And the microphone is a Shure SM7B. I use that for streaming. It's been around forever. They're great. And the first thing we'll kind of start with is this Winwing Orion 2 throttle base. I really, really love the Winwing pro uh, uh, products. They're heavy, they seem robust, a lot of metal in there, very versatile. This is the KA50 Collective. Um, I enjoy this piece of gear. You've got buttons and switches and sliders and rotary encoders they're just it's just a really good uh, piece of gear if i wanted to i could swap out that collective with this um, fa18 hornet throttle it's it's pretty good um, i don't really use it that much I, i've purchased this extra little base no no frills on that but honestly i i really can't say i use it that much at all um, Kind of going to the middle here, I have the Flight Velocity Ace um, Flight Control Console. This is a recent uh, acquirement, and it is the kind of the central piece of my setup right now. It is it is more general aviation specific, but this thing is also made largely of metal. It is heavy as all get out. It is not mounted in any way to the desktop, it's just sitting there and it doesn't budge when I use the yoke. And I got this to replace my Honeycomb Alpha, which I do still have, but I wanted something a little bit different. And I like the fact that this uh, has so many different pieces of gear in it. And I have done a, a video review of this and um, please feel free to, to check it out. But uh, kind of moving over, we'll go down. Here is the Thrustmaster TPR uh, pedals. This thing is one of my favorite pieces of my whole setup. So far, so good. It is lasted. It is also fairly robust. Excuse my nightmarish cable management. But honestly, it's just not a fight I'm going to fight because uh, I'm always changing stuff around. And if I try to hide these cables, then just trying to run cables down just becomes problematic. So I just live with it. It's, it's, it's really not that bothersome. And when I'm sitting in the chair, I don't even see it. Kind of continuing on, we have the, this is a Winwing Orion 2 joystick base. Right now it's got the F-16 EX Viper grip on it. I use this primarily for helicopter stuff. I'm not really flying the fighter jets or the like, but it really works nicely. For helicopter stuff, it's got the ability to change the springs, and it will basically just stay where you leave it. It doesn't, the way it's set up now is it really doesn't self-center, which is wonderful for helicopter uh, things. 
kind of moving this way. This is a, a Rode, Rodecaster Duo. This is where all my audio comes through, both streaming and just regular gaming. Here, of course, is the Honeycomb Bravo, a very widely used piece of gear. Uh, this is dollar for dollar, one of the most versatile pieces of gear that I have. And I still use it. And so I'll come up with profiles where I'll disable one set of throttles and enable the other or vice versa. But if I'm going to do like say multi-engine or bigger planes, the Bravo really, really does come in handy. Kind of moving over here, this is the FSX Dual. This is to uh, interface uh, GA uh, headsets to your uh, flight sim. This is, this is a great piece of kit. If you are doing VAT sim or pilot edge, and so if you're a, a pilot, a real pilot, or even a sim pilot, and you want to use uh, actual general aviation headgear, this is the device for you. Coming over here, we have uh, an iPad that's running uh, ForeFlight on it. And I use ForeFlight when I fly, and it does interface with Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane, so there's just no reason not to use it. If you don't have something like this, and of course, Navigraph would probably be the way to go. Coming across here, we have a couple of things. We have the Flight Sim Builder G1000 suite. And so I've been using this lately. And the reason I've kind of switched over to this from say the Air Manager touch panel setup that I had previously is I am trying to be a little more specific when I fly um, in the flight sim uh, world. Flying in real life has just gotten to be expensive and I'm not able to fly as much as I would like. So this helps me approximate the setup that I have in the plane that I rent, and it just keeps me a little bit more current. Here, of course, is a stream deck, and I use this for both streaming, but also there's a plug-in that allows it to interface with Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. Coming across over to here, we have the Logitech uh, flight panels. I have a multifunction display and two radio panels. And these are nice if you're doing also doing VAT sim and pilot edge, especially the radio panels. But as I've said in another video, if you haven't purchased these and you're trying to get more mileage out of your dollar, I would consider some touch panels and air manager before I would go out and buy these. I've already had I've had these forever and you know, I, they, they definitely add to the immersion and, you know, anything you can do to not touch a mouse is always good. But again, if you're trying to save some money, I think you'll get more mileage out of Air Manager and uh, some touch panels. I still do use Air Manager. Uh, I just don't have touch panel functionality anymore. But say when I'm flying helicopters, I can still use these two screens with Air Manager and get some decent mileage out of them. This device with the blinky lights on it, this is a Toby head tracker. And I just got this. I'm still kind of getting used to it. Haven't decided if this is going to be permanent or not. Having said that, what's nice is it's magnetic and it just clamps or sticks right to my Flight Sim Builder G1000 frame. So it's easy, super easy to mount. It puts it in a perfect spot. And it is easy to turn off and on. And so I'm still trying to decide if, if I'm going to use this or not. It's... It's still new to me, and I haven't, I haven't really decided how I feel about it. This monitor is an LG 32-inch uh, NVIDIA G-Sync monitor. I don't use the G-Sync aspect of it, but it's a decent monitor. It's very sharp. Um, as I said before, I don't run uh, anything in 4K, but this could do it if I needed to. I, I'm still doing 1080p. This image that's on here right now is 1080p. And honestly, it just it's, it's good enough for now. Um, I don't stream in 4K. It's just not the, this is not a robust enough setup to do that. And so I just go ahead and stay in the 1080 world. And that is about it. One last thing. I'm going to shut the light down. 
And this is kind of what my rig looks like most of the time. I usually, when I'm playing on this or, or training or doing whatever I'm doing or streaming, I have the lights down and just added some RGB strips and it just adds a little bit of, again, some ambience to this and just makes things a little more fun. And uh, in any case, I hope this was entertaining. If you have any questions, Please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. I'll put a, an equipment description uh, down below as well. In any case, I hope you guys have a great day.